Oh, Dota 2 fans, welcome back. Fourth best of two of the day. Game two coming up. MVP Phoenix versus No Logic Gaming. Rage and Lumi here, your English coverage. NLG have had a rough go at these first two days. They have netted one point thus far in the game show Global Esports Cup. Who they beat? They beat Vega. They tied Vega. So all right, yeah, that that would be a team to beat. Yeah, uh, they looked good in game two against 4CL, and were looking to build a reputation as the Giant Slayers, but fortunately, uh, ended up. I, I'm not sure if I would put uh, 4CL on on the list of Giants yet, but uh, yet, sure, fair enough. They do have some uh, Giant players. Mm -hmm. Saxa is like some some uh, two meters. <laughs> He yes, he actually he is. He is literally is. a giant. <laughs> he actually is. I thought you meant some of those uh, household names. Oh, big name. They, they got Pycat. Yeah, I'm not sure if I put Bambo up there either yet, maybe. So, so, Bambo, so. I hope you're listening. Hey, Bambo. They are, yeah. So they're top four material, at least for this tournament. Uh, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, NLG just able to net that one tie thus far. Could use another one here desperately, but still don't know if that's even enough. To help them make it through. I think mathematically they're out. But uh, more than likely that is the case. At this point it's about learning and playing good Dota. So mm -hmm. draft. Uh, what do we draft here? Huskar? <laughs> I have not seen Hus uh, NLG play Huskar. Well, there was one Huskar game in the tournament. Got dumpstered. Not really the fault of the draft though. Um, I actually am surprised, surprised that NLG hasn't really put uh, Windrunner on Excalibur more. Yeah, because I feel like that's actually one of his best hero. It's one of the heroes that you don't really need as much help, um, especially you know seeing the style of I don't know MVP who throws things like Spirit Breaker and Bounty Hunter your face. I think One Run is probably one of the Certainly. best hero yeah. against that kind of situation. I think it may have been fifth phase banned uh, in that first game. Um, don't quote me on it, but it may have been fifth phase banned. Okay. So, um, I, yeah, they they've. Yeah, they've kind of run some stagnant heroes for him, uh, Excalibur, and, and more recently, or before the tournament, they used to run heroes that get active really early on. One thing that NLG tended to do was kind of sack their safe laner for a bit and roam their two supports with the mid yes. and look to find kills. And yeah, they have, they've kind of strayed away from their bread and butter in that sense and uh, been really unable to get hit their stride uh, in this one. But we'll see if they do something uh, super unorthodox. And of course, unorthodox for NLG is relative um, as they tend to draft a little bit out of the meta but we'll see what they do here if they give that QO SF back up for this one and they nope. will ban it first first ban of course thank you production for <laughs> throwing us into the draft we'll see what MVP uh, look to remove from the pool here more than likely Doom going to be taken out uh, Tusk also a hero that both these hero, uh, both these teams excuse me, like to run quite a bit often um, Wisp, I think, is the go-to hero for Spartan as well, although mm -hmm. haven't ha been having le uh, much success. There's a lot of relocates where they're like, oh, I left my partner. Mm. I think that just shows like the the young age of the team. Yeah, you know, lack not of experience, yeah, lack of communication. Not communication properly. A so. little bit slower in this first phase than generally we see uh, with these bands. We'll see if the Bane is left in the pool. Um, I know both teams here would be, and pretty much any team at this tournament, uh, as has been revealed, would be more than content to grab that up in this first phase. First pick is going to go the way of NLG in this one, and MVP are going to have that radiant side. So actually, first pick and Dire, it's rare that teams take with the second pick uh, the radiant side. But MVP opting to do so here. So I'm not sure whether this hero was banned out last game, but uh, a hero that's also very good against the MVP plays out is the Night Stalker. Yeah, fifth Sim phase ban actually. Oh, fifth phase ban. Okay, yeah. so just like simply turning on the darkness makes uh, MVP's team fight much harder to execute because mm. you just can't see it coming. I uh, respect Spirit Breaker ban here, first phase. Yeah, and the MVP bans are pretty much the same as they were in that first game. So NLG finally will get their tusk, um, so they'll be able to play that up. And more more often than not, they played in uh, the support role for Spartan, but they can also put it over on Mitch in the off lane. Uh, we'll see what MVP's opening here is. Uh, SF, of course, banned out the Darkseer. Wyvern wouldn't be too surprising here. Dazzle also pretty good and is good with Tusk, uh, having that heal bomb from the Snowball. So wouldn't be too surprised to pick them up to ban it, uh, pick ban it, so to speak. And they do alongside that Bane. Dazzle, Bane. What a pair. I mean, that just secures your laning face. It, I feel like MVP could get extremely greedy and draft weak laners now. 
because you have two very strong lane supports to mm -hmm. back it up. Uh, meanwhile, No Logic goes back for Disruptor. Fairly good against both of these supports. Um, and, and it's definitely one of the comfort support heroes. Yeah, Disruptor. Uh, it's odd to see it picked up this early on. Um, but NLG, like in here, especially, That's true. especially That's true. considering that MVP have showed both their supports, and they're not going to be ha having to draft any supports down the line. But uh, NLG going to be happy to pick that up. And with the with the Tusk and the Glimpse, they should have some pretty good chase with this duo thus far. Queen of Pain ban going to come out from NLG side. Not a hero that's been paid a lot of attention uh, throughout the tournament thus far. Except by NLG. Mm -hmm. NLG definitely show a lot of respect to the hero. And at least uh, in, in certain parts of the game, we saw Madara landing some big Sonic waves. Yeah. Um, at the same point, I feel like the hero has a lot of weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Ember being one of the... One of the hero that does very well against her Meepo for certain teams just thrives on seeing Queen of Pain picks on the other side. Huskar here being uh, taken out once again. I think it was Phoenix that took yeah, it out last game. Phoenix time? Bandit in the yeah. first game. So interesting to see that there. And I yeah, think I think Night Stalker. They're lacking physical, I suppose. So at this point. I think Night Stalker is a hero either both either of these teams could uh, operate with, mm -hmm. especially on NLG because nighttime plus glimpse chasing is uh, the way to go really to pick off a lot of these kind of squishy supports in the mid game. Yeah, and often Phoenix would run it in the four, so having their two supports are probably the less likely of the two to pick it up here. Um, Phoenix going to need all their cores, uh, so do you expect kind of the fighting style cores, or would you expect that since they have their lanes somewhat shored up thus far that they can secure the late game? For who? For With their cores, for Phoenix. Um, I think they're looking for a fighting core that also could scale to the late game, namely mm -hmm. the Ember Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, you could make the argument that Ember is very Ember good Spirit. against the... There you go. Um, you can make the argument that Ember is very good against Disruptor, because you could disjoint the glimpse if you time it properly right and a very good ember play will never actually get caught by the disruptor things yeah static storm nice against ember spirit but with a dazzle behind you uh, you should be more often uh, than not safe enough uh, until that expires to get the remnant out so yeah uh, more it's it's a, a more favorable matchup against disruptor than generally on paper for this ember spirit here and uh mvp do do love to play this hero magnus is an intra another interesting pick especially it's a deny on. pick it, they cannot give away Ember plus Magnus together because mm -hmm. that just gives them the mid, gives them the uh, the empower, or gives them the off lane because Mag could go mid or off. And then Ember plus empower side of Fist is just not a joke. So I think it, it's a hero that they're not very comfortable with, but they just have to pick it up. So it's a, just a very strong drafting play from the side of uh, MVP picking up Ember third and be like, hey, you know, Magnus is in the pool. Slark, yeah. Slark is a very interesting pick. Uh, coming out from NLG, uh, also a hero that's not too bad against uh, Disruptor. Disruptor, of course, with the Thunder Strike, uh, does have that extra vision to cancel up the, the passive. But if he gets that off, he can stop him from. Being I'm not able sure to whether you could pack that off. Can you? Uh, I believe you can, and you can also okay. ultimate at least to prevent the glimpse. So. Um, Slark, pretty good matchup here. Not the strongest hero, um, but uh, offers them a lot of mobility. So Ember Spirit, as you mentioned, they're going to want some fighting cores that can scale. And Ember Spirit and Slark certainly have quite a high bit of mobility across the map. All right, so MVP is leaning very hard on the Spain right now because that's their only form of catch. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very easily interrupted form of catch. Just glimpse from 1800 range will do it. Tusk Snowball will do it. And you're standing still, so Magnus Obscura as well as RPU. I'm not sure whether this is the best anti-mage game, but it's definitely not a bad one. Yeah. Just simply because there's not much catch. Yeah, they have they have grip, but uh, uh yeah, aside from the grip and the nightmare, um, pounce not going to stop him from blinking away. Uh, Searing chains does, yep. uh, but not the longest disable uh, until it's leveled completely. So anti-mage should have a good time at least early on to try and get uh, some items up, and having that in power will help him accelerate towards uh, his battle fury and thereafter. So I'm thinking of some off lane that gives you catch potential. LC comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you could look for things like Centaur. Another way to go about it instead of catching the anti mage is to dumpster him in lane. Um, in terms of really strong lane, I guess can you do something like Timber? I'm not sure if it Timber versus anti mage is very like um, risky in the sense that mid game you become a big bomb for your team as well because right. your mana pool is manipul huge. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what is the pick here. Some single target lockdown that's still in the pool. I mean, I guess they could go for the Beastmaster. Um, a lot of teams have been 
kind of coming helping that come back into favor recently. MVP sure, Phoenix, yeah. not really one of them that's been playing it. Offers a little bit of extra physical nice damage, but stalker. yeah, okay go for the stalker. So the crippling fear is going to be nice before that manta style comes out. And this will be a core night stalker, which is not something that we've seen all that often in the tournament. Could do a core bane. At sure. least uh, how you have done that in the <laughs> past. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, the hero's bonker enough to to really get away with anything, mm. but. Uh, going back to the point earlier, I feel like MVP's lineup is very greedy, so the Bane most likely will be playing the support role to help out these greedy lanes. Yeah. Any, All right. Any chance at? Do you feel there's any chance at an aggressive tri lane for MVP? Probably not. Yeah. Because I feel like that's when Bane or heroes that require a bit of uh, experience to to really Through help the jungle. Yeah. Right. So I, I think we're gonna standard see our standard two two one uh, with one of the the supports helping on mid lane. I imagine Ember is going to be the one that's going mid here. Yeah. Um, yeah MP going to pick it up. Actually, QO picks up the Slark. So yeah. probably just a, an issue of, of comfort with the heroes. Um, but yeah, QO play a lot of Slark for MVP during uh, TI5. Right. So I, I doubt he goes towards the mid lane. And MP going to pick up the Ember for now. MVP Phoenix is going to be playing on that Radiant side. QO picking up the Slark. MP going to accompany him on Sheen, the Ember Spirit. Ryzen going to have that Dazzle. Already out towards the lane, much like he was in game one. And Dubu going to take towards the offlane on the Bane alongside Forev on that Night Stalker. Yeah, so Dubu again going for that boot spill mm -hmm. that we, we saw him doing earlier today. Although the, the flavor of the week is definitely the no, no talisman. talisman. <laughs> yeah, more stats. On the other side here, NLG Excalibur is going to be playing that Tiny. Starts with the uh, Style Shield. Normally he goes to the full PMS, but uh, we'll see if he's going to upgrade it later. Spartan playing the uh, Tusk. On the upper side of the map, Madar, going to be playing the uh, Anti-Mage. I think you were showing Disruptor being handled by Milan. And then we have Mitch playing the uh, Magnus on the bottom lane. Looks like he uh, got into a little bit of scuffle, losing a bit of health. Yeah, Horizon not even needing to skill anything there, so just a couple right clicks from the Dazzle. Um, yeah, lack of catch here. So the Magnus should be able to find at least experience in the offlane, if nothing else. I guess. It depends how Ryzen zones him. Because mm. Dazzle walking towards you, his base damage is nothing you really scoff at. And the high uh, 305 base attacks, or er, base, move, base movement speed is pretty good for Dazzle. Looks like Q is actually going to go mid on the Slark. Not something you see ever. I remember seeing it once uh, against like Batrider because you could remove the Napalm. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how he... It's not the worst matchup versus Excalibur. He, with that essence shift early on, uh, it can look to... At least trade evenly in the lane, if not dominate it. But Spartan going to accompany his Tiny at least early on. And on the other side, the response is going to be Dubu's Bane. Yeah, he's definitely the better hero to survive any kind of toss-back shards play. Because you could easily pounce over it. With that said, though, uh, if Excalibur plays it well, he could move in front of the pounce. And then have Kyo stuck uh, within the ice shards. So definitely going to be a very interesting lane. Um, Bane having the boots here is going to be tipping the lane towards MVP's favor, in my opinion. Because he is a Bane. Mm -hmm. And he has Brain Sap. Yeah, trades very well as well. Four base armor uh, on that Bane on top of uh, the very high right click early oh, on. Already toss, toss into the tower. And shards? Yeah, QL going to be able to pounce over those shards in time. But he does take quite a bit of damage for it. I'll probably have to back off and expend that salve after this first wave. Top lane. Toss back again. Mid lane. Pounce is not up here. That's going to be first but against Q. Not really paying respect to Excalibur. Excalibur definitely knows this hero. They started to aggress towards Ferev, but he'll be just fine on the Night Stalker. And Q going to come back in and just throw out a pounce for Harass. Uh, there's no more toss mana, so he's like, okay, I, I could safely... Oh, actually, he gets Mango back up here by Spartan! And now a third toss back, Dubu in a lot of trouble, body blocking coming in. Can they get the last hit Nightmare for himself? And they just need one more tick, but he does have Mango or mana for another Ice Shard. The Pounce is going to come in, the two Rage Troops hitting against Spartan. Spartan will die here because he doesn't have Snowball either, he's only level one. Oh, just just a tiny bit more, they needed it. Uh, probably not the best time to go, considering the three Rage Creeps. Going aside of uh, the other direction, but nice play. Yeah. At least they tried. They have pounce in two seconds. He could make the play. Bane gonna deny himself to neutrals as well. So Dubu can return to this mid lane. Shards are gonna catch QO here. Excalibur had enough for an Avatos, but not gonna expend it. And QO picking up that level three does go for that second point in pounce as opposed to picking up the one 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 utility build at this point and. Excalibur and Spartan looking to dominate this one as the Bane is no longer present. Toss back onto QO. He's fine. He's fast. 
has that salve available as well. Two minute rune gonna spawn here. Avalanche gonna be thrown out. Dubu. Okay, no more pounce again here. Q O again not paying respect to this hero. He's nice nightmare, but I'm not sure whether he actually blocked damage. It seems like he did. Yeah. But uh haste rune gonna get picked up here by Tiny. So I could really see this lane completely ramping out of control for Excalibur. And more importantly, Stark is not one of those heroes that you could go zero and two in lane and expect to do very well in like five, six minutes. Yeah. Aside from this mid lane. Ember Spirit looks to be doing very well against the Magnus. He hasn't even found uh, much CS at all. MP sitting atop that CS chart, though. And uh, we'll give a over quite a bit of experience to this mag underneath the tower here. He's going to pick up his level 3. On the other side of things, Forev sitting at about equilibrium, about parity uh, with that. Uh, the haste rune mid, though, with that Magnus, I should say. Yeah, he is going to cast you Avalanche. Not going to have the toss to be there, though. He's definitely looking for it. There's the toss back. And Spartan, again, can we get the shards? It's going to be a good one here. Dubu now trapped here in, in an icy prison. Again, another kill. <laughs> Just hanging around a little bit too long there. Uh, Excalibur expends the Avalanche, so they feel like they can stand in front of him in trade. But, yeah, yeah Spartan has been present in the right place, right time for him. Bot lane there, going to catch the Poison Touch onto Mitch. He does... A mango up though, and we'll be able to skewer. You you put a, a good mana void, but for now he's just uh, hanging out in the jungle. Supports all pretty evenly leveled uh, at this point. The Magnus, as you mentioned, has picked up that level six bot lane, rising in a bit of trouble here. They do not have okay. the RP any longer. He has a stick though, if needed, but that flame guard just ticking Mitch down. Good RP now. He'll use the RP, and he's gonna tick down to the flame guard regardless. Excalibur has a toss in a moment. Spartan coming through. Dubu gonna come through with the brain sap. He's gonna have to stick up. He bottle charges as well. Will they look to snowball re-engage here? He does bring him through. Dubu gonna get the nice. nightmare off. It's gonna dodge. He gets the avatar okay, combo. Okay, that's so nice. <laughs> you dodge the snowball and then you just die. Uh, he tried. He tried. Yeah. Pretty much all he could do at that point. It's going to be uh, an illusion in bottom lane to fill up the bottle. And QO is a bit far forward mid lane. There's a level 3 glimpse available as well. But he doesn't get the thunder strike off. So has no vision of QO and will be able to back out towards that rune. I think uh, MVP will really regret not putting more, more pressure on Steve on this mid lane. And uh, looks like we're going to see a little bit of go here on the bottom lane here. MP in a lot of trouble. Avatos will not get the kill as he does have a spirit back out. But... Once Excalibur gets his blink, four out of five people on the side of MPB just straight up die to the yes. combo. So I, I don't know how they deal with Tiny here. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate there for Excalibur as well as uh, the toss actually tossed up to creep. Had it got the Ember Spirit, it would have been close, but he's able to run in out there. And kill mid lane, give me some rotations back in, but he's got back up behind him. Perhaps baiting to some extent, but now uh, they will retreat back to Boo. Sitting on his level 5, still no Fiend's Grip available to the side, and as you mentioned, that Blink Dagger is now going to come out for Excalibur. Yep, and it looks like MVP is going to take the more, much more late game oriented approach. QO picks up the Hand of Midas, and it looks like Ember is looking for the Boots of Travel as he's saving up 2,000 gold. Mm -hmm. So, it's good if it gets there, but Tiny... I mean, wh what does your Bane and Dazzle do now? They literally just have to play in Fog the whole game. Because mm -hmm. if you don't Tiny sees you, you're dead. Mid lane, Milan. Gonna have a, a TP forced out here, and this is gonna secure a tier one tower at the very least uh, for the dire side. Mid top though, Forev in a lot of trouble, trying to gonna, trying to phase away, but it's daytime. He doesn't nearly RP. Have to They're even gonna expend the RP for this one. So, interesting choice. Our big heal bomb comes out from Ryzen, and Spartan's actually gonna be traded for this. Forev gets a stick okay. charge, okay, and Madara having to blink forward for it. No TP rotation in. Got mana void. Yeah, they finish off the Dazzle, so we'll make it a favorable trade when all is said and done. Unfortunately, no TP rotations in from the rest of the lineup. It was not one on the Bane, but now Q is going to rotate through, and he's going to be scouted out. And he knows that as his Shadow Dance passive does expire. Tries to pounce forward, will not grab up Mitch, and he's going to take a lot of damage. Has the ultimate available. Dubu rotating through, no Fiend's Grip available. Dubu? Not your happy place. Okay. They know he's there. <laughs> he's dead now. Walrus punch up in the air. He's going to try and nightmare himself. Doesn't even get the brain sap off in time. And yeah, Dubu. Going to be caught between. Oh, this is a nice game because Excalibur is coming in from back line. If, they s if he sees a squishy, he's going to just jump for a quick kill. Kyo has no shadow dance and they're pretty much well aware of that. So he's going to show himself in front of the lane. We'll see if he backs off towards the east. It's going to be the Night Stalker first though, not the squishy. Oh no! The targets. And Excalibur probably looking elsewhere on his screen as he gets crippling feared up. And they'll jump through with the pact and the pounce. They'll right-click him down. 
and deep behind enemy lines. Excalibur are going to be punished for it. See if they clicked on him. They probably discovered the Blink Dagger as well. QO going to continue to jump forward. The Glimpse is available. <laughs> <laughs> Easy TP out for Milan. Even if he hit the pounds, I don't think he would have yeah. got the kill. MP looking to find the Magnus. He will be able to chains him up, and he'll try and TP away. There should be enough what? damage here. No, the one right click is just shy of bringing down Mitch, and the shards may be buying just enough space before that right click comes through. Madara been farming the enemy jungle with that in power up, and does have the perseverance available to him here 14 minutes in. So I do like the way that MVP is playing this. They're going for much like more late game oriented item with the Midas and BOT, yet they're not just passively playing this game. They're looking to actively fight, even though their hero might not be the best for fighting at this stage of the game. They don't want to give Anti-Mage essentially a free game uh, just to farm away. And you do have the Night Stalker, so you should be looking actively to put up a little bit more pressure. Bottom lane, lane. Snowball is going to find QO. He'll be able to pack, but it won't save him. And Manavoy is going to be there as the emphatic nail in the coffin. And the Anti-Mage is going to find his third kill, I believe. Fourth kill, actually, of the game already. Yep. Uh, with that, so that's going to be a lot of momentum in addition to... You. Uh, the farm he's already accrued from the creeps, and that's that 14 minute battle fury on top of that, gonna have the empower. So, anti mage is an issue they're gonna need to begin to deal with here. And because anti mage is, I consider him very farm, because the normal timing to finish your treads and battle fury is 14 minutes, mm -hmm. but he has a headdress on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, that means he's gonna be ramping up to Mantis out relatively soon. This yeah. Depends if he's gonna go back for this. Um, um, Vlad that you normally see and it looks like he's gonna go straight Manta and I think this is the right choice because it limits the timing window that MVP has over from them. Right now you have two reliable way of disabling him. Mid lane looks like Forever is gonna be dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, doesn't feel like they've gotten all that much out of this Night Stalker. No, yeah, and, and th that's the timing window I'm talking about. Before he, before Manta time, Nightmare is your, sorry, uh, Clipping Fear is your one way, one of your way disabling this AM. Mm -hmm. uh, but that window is closing rapidly as Mandara is farming like a god. MP top lane, a little unhealthy, does have the boots of travel, so can drop a remnant and return to this lane here. Um, but it looks like bot lane, they are looking for the trade, they get Jeez. the static storm off, and QO can be brought down. And War of Attrition, in terms of vision, seems to have been tilting quite heavily in NLG's favor. And after what's been a rough day overall for them, they start off and they continue to roll in this one. MVP, going to play a little bit scared toward this mid lane, going to try and find that trade top. I think MVP at this point is starting to think about late game and high ground defense and I mean they don't even have the best in that situation. Yeah. You really need a farmed Night Stalker to stand in the front line. And Night Stalker speaking which is either going for Blade Mail or Medallion of Courage. Yeah. I don't think this is like a buckler kind of thing, right? No, I, I highly doubt that. Um, he doesn't have the mana pool to support. Neither of which feel extremely effective. Um, at this point. I mean, he does have a pretty um, inherently big health pool, but yeah, Blade Mail, yeah, he, he just hasn't had the opportunity to be in the front line, as you were mentioning. Top lane, they are going to get the Slight of Fissuring Chains out on Excalibur. That'll keep him at bay and keep MP safe for now. Meanwhile, Dubu rotating through with Forev and a little bit of misfortunate timing, but they will find end up finding Spartan. They need a little bit more burst. Alright, the silence is good and looks like they do get the kill. The kill being very important for Forev because they ref uh, that's his bottle charges or sorry earn charges he hasn't actually been in a kill before this yeah so his uh, effectiveness has been pretty bad yeah pretty limited uh, to say the least it looks like this yasha should be coming out yeah for madara so really unchecked uh, as this anti-mage entirely 150 cs at this point four kills to his name double stack of ancients he's going to be able to farm that up pretty easily and despite only having one outer or one tier one tower left it doesn't feel like at all that NLG uh, are being uh, constricted on this map. NLG is doing everything they... Th they're winning this game so hard right now, in my opinion. I mean, the goal lead says is only like 2 to 3k, but I feel like unless something drastic happens in the next 5 to 10 minutes, um, MVP is going to lose this in the ultra late game. To be fair, Ember Spirit and Slark are decent late game heroes, but yeah. you're looking at Empower Magnus and an Empower Tiny. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget about that. Tiny, all of his damage is base damage, and you bump bump that up by 50%. I mean, once he gets the Aghanim Scepter, he is uh, essentially going to, like, six-shot your tower, your tier three towers. So, I'm, I don't know, man. 
he's not behind by any stretch either uh, on Excalibur. He's got 1,900 gold as well. So, yeah, things are not looking favorable at this point for MVP. And um, MP is really the only one who's kept up in terms of farm. Uh, second, sitting second overall on the net worth, but he still doesn't have a battle fury and is about a perseverance away from it at this point. Yeah, but oh, top lane, Avatos combo blink, and if you blinked, you missed. Indeed, yeah, it's a dead QO, and mid lane, they're gonna get the skewer off onto Ryzen into the static storm. It will slightly glimpse? whiff, but yeah, okay. They will be able to bring Ryzen down, so two kills. In about two seconds, and it's going to be a mid lane tier one. No glyph available yep. to the radiant side, so no defense can be mounted here. It's going to be an uh, easy kill. 15 to 7, 18 minutes in. NLG really starting to take the driver's seat in this one. Yeah, and this is where you start to look towards Roshan. You're on the Dari side. There's no rush. I mean, Magnus also has the blink, and he is probably going to be uh, you know, looking for pickoffs. Actually, Excalibur goes back for a Shadow Blade, which is something that we see a lot out of Pycat's carry tiny build. Uh, in fact, he goes for Shadow Blade first mm -hmm. and prioritizes more on split pushing and picking off. Uh, normally, I would heavily suggest the Aghanim Scepter, but in this case, he's not the true carry of the team. That's yeah. Anti Mage, so all he really needs to do is create more space. And Shadow Blade is probably one of the better items to do so. Yeah, and he does have that Empower to help him farm uh, without having the Aghanims regardless. So. Yeah. As you mentioned, Empower synergizing very well with uh, just the way Tidy is concocted as a hero. And gonna, it's getting like free plus 80 damage or something mm -hmm. with Empower. It's just insane. Yeah, so we'll have that Shadow Blade delivered out. It's going to give him a little bit of attack speed as well, which is certainly nice to have always as a Tiny. D very deep, aggressive vision coming out from this Dire Squad. Pretty much have entire the entirety intel to the position of the entirety of this MVP squad. And Radiant too. I think they did scout out Tiny's uh, delivery of the Shadow Blade. Yeah. Uh, they do have a smoke over here and they will look to D-Ward. So perhaps that is a play they look to make here fairly soon. Roshan. <laughs> he might just die. Tiny is uh, nearby. I think uh, we need like a dedicated Tiny cam. <laughs> Because he's the one that's probably getting most of the kills. Yeah, they are going to look to find a numbers advantage before they retreat into the pit here. But not going to find anyone home just yet in this Radiant jungle. Still, though, Madara farming away and looking to widen the gap away from these cores on the Radiant side. Already 4k ahead of this Ember Spirit. And QO, as we've seen time and time again, is fairly far behind at this point. All right, NLG instead of going for the uh, Roshan, which is guaranteed, they're going to try to fight under the tier 2. They do have the Mantis out right now, so they... Ooh, nice starts. And, <laughs> whoa, that nice Augur gets blown up. Meanwhile, Mitch gets initiated. The QO, silenced up, gets punched up in the air. The Grave is decent, but the Magnus much, much better. I'm surprised there was not a Mana Void to just blow everybody back up, but that is a wipe. 4 to nothing. Ember Spirit didn't even join the fight, which uh, ended up being the correct choice here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably a wise decision, and MVP just not fight ready at all. Um, not only is the Slark uh, down about... Uh, he has half the net worth of the Anti-Mage, but 2,000 of that is invested in this Midas, Midas yeah. at this point. So They're going to lose racks right here. Yeah. Nothing much else to it for NLG here. They are, I mean, despite having an Anti-Mage just looking really fight ready at this point, and MP only with the one Battle Fury really isn't the greatest at pushing out these ways and defending high ground jump forward from Excalibur he's not going to find the Avatos combo but they're burning Dubu's mana completely just with these illusions from the anti-mage and they'll just take the melee rocks and be content with their spoils and back out here 21 minutes in yeah anti-mage already pushing out top lane he's got the Vlad's finish and 1600 gold in the bank so I imagine he's going to be able to solo Roshan very very soon uh, once he picks up the Vlad's he essentially can do it and he could just pick up like a very very strong fighting item and essentially never die. BKB comes to mind if he wants to go ultra safe there's a heart. Yeah. He could even go for something like butterfly and survive through the physical damage side of things. Yeah the the world is is Madara's oyster at this point. They have really no answer for him now that he has the Manta style up. Uh, no crippling fear, no searing chains to keep him in place yep. coming from the other side. They do have the grips though. Yeah. But uh, he's level 7. <laughs> Yeah, Bane has not looked uh, quite as strong as he has for the rest of the tournament. I don't know if one. Boots is the build. I'm, I'm not so in this. Yeah, mid lane definitely didn't go well. Uh, 
by any by any measurement uh, with the tossbacks uh, happening onto both Dubu and Kuo yeah. early and, th and this Roche completely going to melt with the Sigil and Madara there with the Empower so uh, it's going to be an extra life for that anti-mage and he can look to complete up another item because of having that extra life so seems like it's only a matter of time before they continue to break this MVP base. Uh, I think Madara might actually just go for an offensive item something like a Basher mm -hmm. instead of a defensive one like I suggested but as long as he spends his gold, then LG will be absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean, he's got the coverage of the Static Storm, um, the Tiny Blink, the RP, uh, and even the um, Snowball save. So, yeah, he probably, with this, especially with his extra life, uh, feeling pretty ballsy at this point. And does have 3,300 gold, so we'll see if he buys an Eagle Song, maybe a Reaver, uh, as you were mentioning, towards that heart. But just going to continue to uh, shove out this top wave for now uh, before they reconvene as a unit and push. I'm not sure if you mentioned, but the Night Stalker has gone for the Blade Mill, which is definitely not exact, uh, not exactly the most standard build. Mm -hmm. um, I do have to say though, the the axe build that you normally see Night Stalker get a, uh, you know, when it comes to actual fighting, it doesn't really do much. Like right. it, Vision is great, but it doesn't help you punch harder or anything. And Blade Mill is uh, at least more of a fight-oriented item, which is something that MVP needs. It's just that they're so behind these fights that I'm not yeah. sure whether that even helps at all. How do you feel about uh, QO opting for the Blink Dagger here? I feel like he probably needed more stats to continue fighting, but he's going to go for an initiation item against what has more or less been a five-manning lineup from NLG. Yeah, Blink Dagger is good if you could pick off the backline supports, but mm -hmm. even the squishiest hero on the team, which is the Disruptor, he has a Glimmer Kick. So I don't know who he's exactly looking to pick off. Another way, to, another way to trade this item is as a split pushing item, which he's kind of walking around to do so, but Ember to me has that covered, so I don't know. I'm not sold on Blink. MVP are playing this appropriately, at least, uh, continuing to try and drive back uh, the lineup of NLG by shoving in the side lanes, but uh, I mean, Madara, I mean, NLG are in no rush. Uh, they do have a, a great advantage, but. Uh, as you as you mentioned earlier, they have the late game pretty soundly secured. Yep. I mean, there will be a point where Slark and Ember might technically get better mm. when you get like I don't know, Battle Fury, Double Dayless, and Divine. Mm. <laughs> but uh, that's very very far from now. Yeah, Madara just farming the entire map uh, is gonna go for the butterfly. So a little bit of both it seems uh, in terms of offense and defense going to be provided to him. Shadow Blade picked up by Mitch's Magnus as well, so should have no excuse not to get off uh, an influential RP in these next few engagements. And yeah, they have more or less everything they want. There's an AC up on Excalibur's Tiny as well. Huh, I'm I'm surprised that he went for Shadow Blade instead of uh, something like a Force Staff. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's definitely a, another good positional base item. So it's all good. Yeah, and they have the AC on Tiny now as well, so the space breaking should be even easier. They're gonna throw him anti mage up on the high ground. He just blinks up on the high ground, yeah. in fact. Oh, limps back onto Q. God. The grave will be there for now. He should be able to ultimate no, he gets all his mana burned. And as this grave is gonna expire, he will be able to stick up oh. and pop that up. The RP though, it's gonna catch two. They're gonna cleave through them. The big heal bomb for now. They keep them safe. I'm forever gonna get Walrus punch up in the air. They are gonna be able to okay. get the Aegis. Okay. They got two man chains. Excalibur okay. Glimmer taped, but he goes down. MP still very healthy as this Ember Spirit, and now they're gonna have to earn back Mitch up. He blinks out Madara though, still in fighting shape. And they oh get the two-man mana void. Crushes down four. Have now MP in trouble. Blink forward, two right clicks, and yeah, I mean that seemed like kind of the dream defense for MVP. They're gonna buy back two heroes, MP being one of them, and that this is gonna force Madara to at least stand on this TP. As 4 have comes in with the Crippling Fear, he'll be able to purge that off. He blinks away as the Searing Chains were soon to follow. Nicely played. Grip going to catch the Anti-Mage, though. Slide of Fist Searing Chains on the north side catches another, but the Walrus Punch is going to cancel that up. And they'll bring down Dubu. And Madara still feeling so strong at this point. Can blink forward. Rise in one last right click. Dead Dazzle. MP. You cannot man up for this Anti-Mage. <laughs> and yeah. He's going to have to back off there after the chains expire. And Nailer Axe is going to be forfeit. QO, though, jumping back in from his respawn timer. And he's going to force out the man Manta. And now the snowball save will be there to save the Anti-Mage. Madara going to make it out. He's the only one they need to make out. At this point. He's going to jump back in. QO is dead. And Madara gets glimmered up. They have a glimpse back. Oh, what? Okay, he actually slighted, 
something to disjoint, I believe. And yep. Dar might be dead here finally. Nope. They will lose Milan. Doesn't have Glimmer Cape. So they get the bottom lane Arax with the creeps and the melee mid. Uh, so NLG, despite feeding over quite a bit, they still don't lose their anti mage. 1300 gold in addition to that battle uh, butterfly, and 26 to 12. So NLG definitely still in the driver's seat at this point. Not exactly sure what MVP could do to come back in this game. Uh, we saw the Fiend script going on the anti mage, but right now they just don't have a way to kill him fast enough, even through a full channel of a Fiend script. And they, and they can't ignore any of these other heroes from NLG. There's just so many ways to counter uh, that grip with the, the Snowball, the Walrus Punch, the Avatar uh, Toss combo, either of the two, and even the RP. So it is it is going to be very tough for MVP. Um, you mentioned picking off the back lines coming out from QO, but it, it seems like whenever he is willing to do so, they just turn on him. He's way too squishy at this point. He is going to try to mitigate that, though, with a fresh BKB. Hmm. I wonder if Ember is going to save for buyback here. Wait, didn't he buy back earlier? Yeah, he so he he did. He did. So he probably should just finish that full data list. Yeah, seems like the play for now. He's going to look to shove out this top lane, but with their base exposed, uh, NLG going to look for the smoke wrap around from bottom lane, and they're not going to find anyone home. So they're well aware that uh, they are more than likely towards this top lane as Roshan is down at this point. I like, okay, we'll take Ranger X then. TPs are going to be inbound a little bit late from the Radiant side, and they are going to blink once again forward towards that top lane. He's going to Manta off the Crippling Fear. MP not near enough by to go for that Cheering Chains, but now he does. QO going to blink forward as well. He's going to get right click once. Avatos combo on the back lines. So the Slark is already down. And QO, of course, with no buyback. He's just too poor at this point. Jump forward. RP is going to be solo, but the Static Storm follows, and that's the only hero that they need to bring down. Ember is down, as you mentioned, with no buyback. Jeez. Mana Void is there. And NLG, they're going to be able to tie this one up. Anti-Mage Dota. I think the game was won immediately when the, the mid Slark lost the lane. Yeah. Because you cannot allow Excalibur to get a, such an early blink. I'm surprised that they drafted the Slark. I... I was hoping that they would do much better in the laning stage, but Excalibur just outplayed, uh, outplayed QO in the mid lane. Yeah, seems like they really didn't respect the tossback plays, and um, it, it doesn't make good enough use of, of your Bane pick, your first phase Bane pick. So MVP looking a little shaky after what was a really, really well-coordinated first game win. Uh, MP kind of the only one to play well. They get nothing out of a Night Soccer who had a... A pretty favorable lane matchup, uh, considering that he was in the off lane and yeah, not able to do anything with the first two night times. I also think that teams should be taking notes when they're playing up against MVP Phoenix next. It feels like when they don't get Tusk or Spirit Breaker, they're definitely out of their comfort zone. They just don't have that aggressive off laner, and suddenly we're looking at things like, you know, this Night Stalker, which honestly did absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like, I don't think he even got that, like, key first night gank. And there was no rotations to his lane. He made no rotations. I think the, the fact that he was solo in that off lane, it, it made it way too obvious whenever he would leave that yeah. he was trying to go get something done. And yeah. Also, to be fair, the mid lane that he was ganking into was a Tusk and Tiny, and it was they're yeah. both very ahead because they, the kills they got, and they're both strength hero and very, very hard to gank. So maybe maybe that's it, where it wasn't a good nice Stalker game. But there, it was a last, last pick Night Stalker, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, if they were able to pressure the Anti-Mage with it, the Crippling Fear is certainly nice to have, but I never really to get any of that done. They, they had to commit too much over to their mid lane, which was losing, yep. uh, to be able to pressure the Anti-Mage. And Madara just able to go off 13-0-5, 877 XPM, almost 900 GPM on the Anti-Mage. This is what happens when Anti-Mage is... Spe uh, especially with an Empower behind him. Yep. But uh, the man of the match is definitely Steve for me. Yeah, Excalibur playing really well in his lane. Yeah, so I keep bringing it back up. It's like, oh, if you let Steve get uh, get going, this is what happens. And yeah. Well, this At is what happens. At least saw him completely shut down um, by the same team in the first matchup. Yeah. Uh, in that mid lane as as the Viper. So uh, much different story here in game two. And NLG will find their second tie of the tournament. Uh, I think they have one more series left. If I recall correctly, they may be done though. Yeah. I think NLG has played all the games, right? They play Empire, they play Vega, they play Complexity, they played yeah. 4 CL. Yeah, so and that, they just that, played that Phoenix. That was their last year. So they're going to end with two points. Mathematically, they are out, but, yeah. uh, you know. 
It's a, it's a good moral victory at the end. Yeah, some much needed experience for them as a squad as well. Uh, we'll see how stable their roster remains, of course, with uh, December 8 roster locks coming up. So that's the fourth series of the game day for us guys. Game Show Global Esports Cup Best of Two. What's coming up next? Get the next game. The man with the with the notepad. What's coming up next? Four CL versus MVP. That should be a very exciting one. And then yeah. I believe we have MVP could use a series win, and it's going to be it's a tough one versus four CL. But four CL are in, so perhaps they try some pocket strats. Oh, I thought they play complexity. Apparently not. Apparently the they dream is still alive. Series left. This is why you shouldn't trust us. Um, but with I that I said, so. I thought so. Yeah, so Cole didn't play at all yesterday, so it would be impossible for them to face him. So if they win that, that's five points, and Complexity are the team lowest in the standings right yeah, now. Complexity could just go zero and whatever. Yeah. And actually, they would need two teams to do that, right? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, MVP as well. So they would need MVP as well. All right. So the dream is technically still alive. But, I mean, MV MVP have yet to face all of the toughest competition. That's true. So... All right, uh, with that, we'll send it to a break. We got 4CL versus...